Hello, welcome to another retool tutorial. For this particular one, I am responding to an email I received from Morticia, who watched one of my videos and had a particular request. This was how to use the tags, tag and multi tags in the table component in the select multi select. So I prepared this small tutorial in response to him. I hope you enjoy and that is helpful. And if you have any other doubt or question you would like me to create a video for, drop me an email. I've put it in the description box. I would love to be able to help you with that particular thing. Let's go. Okay, for this particular example, we're using information about school camps. I just created two tables in my retool database. Uh, it's just camps. You can see it's, it's really simple with camp, with camp name, days of week, and some information and staff. Staff is also really simple as well. Uh, just name, surname, last name, and topic. Right. So I made a query for both for both databases, and here I'm using camps. So because teacher is a foreign key to staff, it's returning an ID one or six, and we can use the tag to map values and return the actual name of the teacher. We already have staff here. So what we have to do is map this value to the information that we have in the staff query. So if we, can, if we look at staff, we can see we have the IDs, the last name, the names, and the topic they teach. So how will we go to do that? Here we have the option list, which is an add-on. And it can be done manual, and we will see that that is an option when you have a fixed and small amount of options like days of week. But for this one, you could have up to 20, 30, or 100, so you cannot be done manual. So you will map it. You map it to a data source. Now, for this particular instance, we're going to directly direct, we'll map it directly to staff, which will select the first level of data. So it will actually be using all of the information here, ID, last name, name, and topic. However, and in future videos, we may be seeing, look at, we can, you can actually drill down and different additional levels. So you could actually be mapping into a particular array. We won't do that right now. We'll leave it as, as there. You can see that written automatically identified value and label. So all of this can be mapped to your query. The most important one for it to work, the most two important are value and label. If I remove this here, you will see that it won't do anything. If I remove this one from here, it still will do something that is actually not completely accurate. So here you can see that I've given the item ID. And if I hover over it, it will show me that it has found these values from one to seven. And in fact, you can see it takes an order from my keys from one to seven. And then the name, it will take the same order. So you will see here name from one to seven and it will connect it as well. So that's why it has been able to identify the name to the foreign ID. <clears throat> you can also add additional variables here. So I can put item last name. So when you write item, you are telling Ritual to search. Item means data, for example. You're actually referring to what is already in your data source. You're referring to staff.data, and then you are, you are just completing which one you want. And just to, for the purposes of a demonstration, you can also here add a caption, item topic, which is biology. However, in tag, it's not always actually visible here. Let me see if I, if the column, if we extend it, size of the column to medium no it doesn't change anything so actually in the tags the caption will actually not show anything but if you had a color you could actually define your colors automatically now let's take a look at days of week you can see that we have more than one value we have one and two three and five in fact if we go to view state here and we look at days of the week each row has an actual object and an array within them. You, you can see one and two, three and five. So we have multiple values in it. The table is already automatically selecting both of them. 
How did I do this in the backend? In the virtual database, I have a JSON type field. So you can see here is a JSON type field. Because it's very simple and it's just a list of numbers or items, they're between square brackets. And this is also how you, you will see it will save it when you take it from your multi-select component. Right, so we have two values in one cell. However, the dynamic is the same as the um, teacher for the one tag. It's just one tag. It doesn't matter if you have multiple values. The options are mapped the same. Here, we could do a manual because we just have five working working days. So for example, we could say one, two, three, four. Um, I didn't actually add it four. That's fine. We'll add one and we'll say this is Monday. This is Tuesday. This is Wednesday. This is going to be four and it's going to be Thursday. And this is going to be Friday and it's a five, right? So this is a way for you to actually your tax at doing it manually. Let me just refresh this. This is also a warning. When you have multiple tags, you should actually also have an overflow for your cell tooltip so that whenever you select here, you can see which ones are, which other tags out there. If you have you just in preview here, you will actually be able to see them. There you go. So that is how you can do it manually. Now, you may not have it may be 20 or maybe 25 and you don't want to do it manually you can create a variable where you map your values now let me show you a trick something i do to create an array here there's this website tableconvert.com and if i just it's like an excel file and i write the fields that i want day and number um this is the days and the number of the, of the day and in here i select the format i want it's a json an array of object you'll you'll play around with it and you see the different things that it does uh, for example parsing it will convert it to an integer and then i can copy it it's very helpful even for large data sets i often do this and then i copy this here so when i look at this variable i will have this array and they have monday a number tuesday wednesday and so on so I could also, instead of doing this manually, I could map it to my variable. And then it will be item day, sorry, item number and item day. There you go. So now they're mapped. If I were to add, I could add Saturday and Sunday. And then what is helpful for this is that if I have multiple tables or other fields, I can just map them directly here and I don't have to do it manually for each component. Okay, and just to finish, we have a form here to submit new rows. And I was saying, as I was saying, we have days of the week and I had already mapped them here manually. But let's say I just added this. Instead of doing it manually, I could go map variable and again, item number and then item value day. So now I have my options. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is a multi-select, so I can select several options. And the teacher, this is the same. So for the teacher, I mapped it. So again, it's not manual, it's mapped. I'm selecting my staff query and the ID cap. And here you can actually see the caption. I added topic. So when I select here, I can see biology, English, maths, computer science, Spanish, you can add whatever you want in your caption. So Let's just add one this, and I want to show you, this is gonna be, say, Maths Summer 2014. Let's just add a query to update our table. QUIE, and it's gonna be camps. And actually here, this is gonna be, I'm not sure if this week, this form data key is necessary for the form to actually caps, capture which ID. So if, if I put form one data, let's see what I get. This is one say. So you can see I get all of the information with my column headers. So grade level teacher, and then I get days a week and I get that same format. So I get a square brackets two and three, Matt Summer. Um, great, so I'm just gonna put a trans, an event handler success. I want to run my camps 
So if I now action is going to be insert a record, save, and let's try that. Oops. So it's it has given me an invalid input syntax for type J. So I had forgotten that the retool database doesn't accept it like that directly. So there's a there's a workaround for that. We have to stringify that base of the week. So let me see if I can do it directly here. So form one data days of week is string by form one days of of week. Right. Don't ask me what this process is doing or how. What I know is when you do this, you're actually saying to take form one data, but also days of the week is going to be different. You're going to stringify it. And now you can see it's actually adding double quotes here. So when I save this and I run, now it's successful and it has added this new math, math summer 2024. So this, this is not the same case for all databases. I usually use Superbase and it directly takes this format days of week, but this is a turn of workaround. So that's it. This is how you can use tags, multi-tags, multi-select and select and update your database and make sure this is displayed properly. I hope this is helpful. And if you have any question, any video you would like to meet me to do, drop me an email. I have it in the description box and we'll 